Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. It is wonderful to be back with you for another week, another interview, another time to spend time together and talk about books and talk to an author about books. Can you believe it is November? It is crazy. Every time I talk to my mom in Montana, the weather is not great. Uh, It snowed last week. It's raining this week. And then I feel slightly guilty because I'm hanging out on the beach on November 7th. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining. It's lovely, but, uh, it, it is when, when I have people from home say, yeah, we got eight inches of snow today. And I'm like, oh yeah, I got a suntan. Um, I feel like I'm bragging. I suppose I am a little, a little bit, but, uh, anyway, I hope your week is going well so far. I hope your November is going well so far. Things are pretty quiet here. We're definitely in the off season, so quiet in uh, life-wise and quiet town-wise where we live. It's it's very quiet. Uh, lo- lots fewer people now that it's November, but uh, also quiet life-wise. We just um, have been hanging out and working and walking dogs and all of that fun stuff. I can't believe Thanksgiving is two weeks from Thursday. That is very, very soon. Uh, I'd love to hear what your Thanksgiving plans are. If you have them, let me know. It's, of course, an American holiday, so we aren't celebrating it in Portugal. Well, I mean, it's not celebrated overall in Portugal. We will be celebrating it, of course, and um, not think we know what we're doing, but not fully 100% sure those plans are set in stone. But at any rate, things here are great. Let's talk about books. Let's talk to an author about books. My guest today is author Damon Manx. He is here to talk about his collection of short stories, mostly horror. That would be probably the easiest genre to put this book into, but it is called manx Iety. his last name Manx, um, but play on words with anxiety. Um, and the stories in this book were inspired by real-life events. Some are loose interpretations of my nightmares and experiences, and others are dark memoirs. All were designed to evoke emotion. Longing, fear, remorse, desperation, and, of course, anxiety are a few of the horrors we all face, and the ones from which there is often no escape. These stories were written during the most difficult periods in my life. Addiction, incarceration, and depression are the demons of which I speak. Creating this compilation became the tool I used to overcome these demons. This is the product of that struggle. This is manx So that is the description of the book, this collection of short stories. And you can see that there's a lot of play on words in there. Uh, it is horror, but it is kind of horror rooted in our everyday experiences, in those demons that we all battle every day. The cover, if you were to look at the cover, uh, if you were at a bookstore or something, you would think, yes, horror. Uh, and you know that that's not always my top choice for genre, but the stories in this book, they invoke a lot of emotions. It's not just creepy, going to keep you up at night. There's some of that, um, but there's also elements of paranormal. There's elements of supernatural. There's elements of the divine. Uh, however you might see the other in the world, there are lots of elements of those, uh, of that other within these stories. And there's also hope. There's also humanity. There's a lot of different elements and layers to these stories. So here we have short stories and horror, two of the, the, the genres that I struggle with a lot. And yet I, I definitely enjoyed reading these stories. I enjoyed this particular collection. So take that as you will. If you're a fan of horror, if you're a fan of short stories, you'll definitely want to check it out. If you're a little leery about both, then you may still want to check it out because 
um, you know, uh, I am also in that in that uh, category of people who kind of struggles with both of those things and still read the whole book, enjoyed the book, did not have to sleep with the lights on, <laughs> if that helps. Let's go ahead and let Damon talk more about the book and the creation of these stories. Again, the book is called Manxiety. The author is Damon Manx. Hi, Damon. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I am excited to talk to you about your collection of short stories. Before we get to the book, though, if you wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit about yourself so that my listeners can get to know you a bit. All right. So my name is Damon Max. I live in New Jersey, very close to the New York border. I'm a member of the Horror Writers Association, the New York chapter. Uh, and over the last year or so, I've been using my authorship to help overcome uh, almost crippling social anxiety. Which How actually is... makes sense <laughs> for the title of the book. Um, and we'll we'll talk about that. And I'm sorry I interrupted you. Did you want to say something else? No, that I was going to say, how's that for a uh, uh, icebreaker? <laughs> <laughs> not, not bad. I think we have some things that we can, uh, we can definitely talk about during our time together. Mm -hmm. um, the book is a play on your last name. So Manx and Manx, Iety. When I first thought saw it, I, I thought maybe it was man, you know, man's anxiety. But I, I I like Manx Iety because that's very personal to you. Can you give an overview of the collection of short stories? Yeah, I will. And first, let me just say now, when I I came up with the title, of course, it was Manx Iety, and I didn't put the hyphen in at first. And I started showing off the book, and and I was getting stared at, like, oh, man, anxiety. Yeah, you know, like I was, that did not go over well. Um, Manxiety goes over much better than people thinking I actually wrote a book about the anxiety that is synonymous to only men, which is not what the book is about. Manxiety is a collection of disturbing stories, which a lot of the, most of these are reflective of a certain time period in my life a s certain various instances that I experienced. And uh, this book was the catharsis of a very um, traumatic moment to, to make a long story short on October 31st, just this last Halloween, I celebrated 11 years clean and sober from uh free from active addiction. I was uh, addicted to heroin for, for quite a while. And, because addicts are so synonymous for the great decisions they make, that resulted in a period in state prison. Manxiety, many of these short stories were written during that time, written during the time where I was finding my recovery, where I was taking classes to receive a college education, where I was dealing with the process and all that I was processing. Um, and then also, you know, coming out into the world, emerging during the height of the pandemic, um, dealing with the anxiety that I was experiencing. Um, because I think most people who return from a, a an experience like that will deal with it in certain levels. So every story in this is representative of some form of anxiety, whether it be my own or the fictitious characters that I created in the book, this story is supposed to elicit some kind of an emotion in the reader, preferably anxiety and tension. Sure. And yeah, and you can actually read it just as a collection of short stories kind of in that horror genre. But what I appreciated was that at the end, you included kind of a brief paragraph about each story and whether or not it was rooted in something from your life or completely fictional. Um, did you set out to write the collection from your own experiences or did you have that? Obviously you, you wrote a lot of this during your, your time in prison. And so there's, there's that element, but when you decided to do a collection, what was the, what was the overarching theme for that collection? Well, you know, I, I had the stories before I even had the idea of the collection. Um, I've been writing short stories for years now. Uh, 
And I, that was my first thing as I, you know, I started submitting them to magazines and I was getting published in the UK, getting published in the United States, um, with various of these, these instances. So essentially my anxiety was going to be like a greatest hits album. Like these are the stories that I first got published, um, ones that have been nominated for awards or, or even won the dead girl, which, which won an award. Um, but then as I was sitting down to create the collection, I realized that, you know, there's, there's this theme, um, throughout and, and, and the theme is, you know, it, it's, it's my own anxiety and it's my own, um, insecurities, fears transcended into story. Uh, and so I said, you know, with, with a few more really right along the lines of this, let me put in some, some straight up nonfiction, some memoirs. I think we have an overarching theme that that really fits well with what I'm trying to create. Yeah, absolutely. And um, in addition to anxiety being kind of the 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 thread that that runs through the stories, a lot of them have elements of horror or um, divinity of some sort, supernatural, paranormal. Um, again, was that kind of in the back of your mind as you wrote this, or did it just occur naturally uh, you know i i'm a lot of my short stories although they originate from something very particular or a very pivotal moment in my life there's an organic nature to them and these stories kind of flow i i'm i'm uh one of the believers that you know maybe we don't completely create our short stories or even the novels we write i think we're more like a radio receiver that taps into whatever is out there. And and I feel that with me because when I'm writing and when I'm in the zone, it comes to me and it comes to me from, I I don't know where, you know, whether it be organic or of a divine nature, I am not to say, but uh, it just sort of happened that way. And I'm glad it does. I'm glad that that transcends because, you know, I, I guess it stems from, upbringing uh what i was influenced as by a child because i feel like i'm emulating the things that uh really inspired me and the ones this the stories and the movies and the books that i found so riveting and the ones that hold i hold dear so Mm -hmm. there are a couple of stories that stand out for me uh you've had some very interesting experiences in your life um and in those in those brief paragraphs they are true um your appearance on jeopardy uh run-in with um a presidential limo just to name a couple but are there uh particular stories that you would like to highlight so you know the, the story starts off uh, the, the book starts off with a story called The Boy in the Center of the Road, which was a kind of an experimental way for me to write. It's about what's taking place in the mind of a young boy who's just been involved in, in a traumatic accident. He's just been hit by a car. And the the nightmares and the visions that are going through his head, I tried to describe to the best of my recollection because when I was 10 years old, I, I was riding my bike and I was hit by a car, which put me in the hospital for close to three months with a, a broken femur, concussion, chipped vertebrae. Um, it was, and these, these nightmares that I experienced during that time, during the time that I was waiting or that before the ambulance arrived, when they took me to the hospital, I, I still remember them vividly. And I, said, well, that's pretty horrific, you know, and, and I put that into a story and, you know, I hope, you know, I, I get a, some, some people say, oh, it's not really horror, you know, or, or horror is such a broad genre, but, you know, imagine being that boy, it's pretty horrific. Um, definitely <laughs> that's, that's one I would like to draw attention to. Another one I would, would probably like to draw attention to is a story called the dead girl which has been probably the the short story i i might be best known for it won a hag award um and it's about 
a young couple who are addicted, um, going through the nightmare of addiction. And, you know, it, it's a, it's a tragic tale of, of love and desperation and, uh, you know, the, the tragedy of, of the addicted souls out there. And, uh, you know, I, I, I know I, I captured that desperation in it because I, I've lived that life. And, um, for me, you know, I, it means so much. And, and I'd like people to appreciate that because, you know, if it could, if it could save one person, that, that would be brilliant. But, you know, if it could touch the heart of somebody who, who has been through it and, you know, says, yeah, man, you, you, you nailed that. Well, that's, you know, that's a blessing too. I, I can imagine. Yeah. That one was very compelling in a lot of ways. We are going to go ahead and take our first break of this episode. When we come back, we'll talk about a lot of things, but we'll talk about what Damon hopes readers might take away from this collection of short stories. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. As you know, I'm speaking today with author Damon Manx about his collection of short stories. That collection is called Manxiety. Let's go ahead and return to the interview. People who have listened to the podcast for a long time know that I'm not a huge fan of horror, at least horror of the like, yeah, really gross, scary variety. What I appreciate about these stories and, you know, whether or not they are horror or something else. There is, there are elements of humanity, elements of hope, um, things that I really am drawn to as a reader. So what do you hope that readers might take away from this collection? You know, I, I'm always just really looking for that connection. If, if one person can say, you know, I, I read your story and it resonated with me on a really impactful level. Whether it, it made you laugh or it made you cry or it made you sleep with the lights on for a, a day or two. Um, that's, that's all I ask for as a writer. Um, you know, the emotional connection, because when I'm writing it, it's coming from a very emo emotional place. And, and that's what I'm trying to convey. I'm not about, you know, I'll use blood when blood is necessary or gore when gore is necessary, but how, how often is it really all that necessary? Um, I think the answer is not, not all that much. Uh, tension building, world building characters. You know, if, if somebody can tell me, I love that character of, of David in the story, the, the widower, you know, and, and talk to me like, like he's a real person, then you know, I feel like I've really done my job as a writer by bringing life to, to an in, inanimate character, giving them depth, three dimensions, and put them into somebody else's head. Sure. And you mentioned that you're not always sure where the ideas come from, but they, they just sort of come to you. How about um, characters within those stories? Do do they ever surprise you? Do they ever go in directions you're not expecting them to? Uh, yeah, I've had a couple characters who who really go go out there and, and do some things that are out of character, and I think that's you know that's very human for us to do things out of character. It's you know if you're just a nice guy and you do nice guy all day long and all throughout the book, and you never stray from the nice guy. 
Well, then that's not really believable because even nice guys have bad days. Or, or if you're the the antagonist of the book, you know, you're just not evil, evil, evil 24-7. I, I've written a couple books. So I recently, well, last year it came out. It's, it's a book called Hacked in Two. And it is one of those stories where the gore was a part of the story and the blood was a part of the story. And it, it just, you know, it started out as this just gritty post-apocalyptic story with somebody saving, uh, trying to save the day. And all of a sudden it, you know, I, I, well, I shouldn't say all of a sudden because I sat on it for so long and I'm like, where does this story go? You know, I, I had, it was a nice little thing, you know, it could fit somewhere maybe in a splattery kind of book. And, uh, but it just didn't have the depth to it. And one day I, it just came to me like, and, and not, you know, like a radio, like I just picked it up. And I immediately cut to the scene of the author writing the book, having a existential crisis because it's not something he enjoys writing. It's not his typical style of book. And, uh, I named him Damon Max and, and I wrote myself into the book and I went through a lot of personal stuff about what this character was going through as, as both stories collided. So he's, my character is writing the book, having a crisis of, of everything pretty much while the story itself is playing out and coming to life. Uh, and, their worlds collide actually in a crazy, crazy way. Wow. That that's really cool. Was it a challenge to kind of keep those, to, to keep it all straight in your head as, as those storylines converged and you were writing yourself in, um, how was that experience? So I, I embellished a lot on the traumas and experiences that I've been through, but I also used a very, I mean, 80% of, of things I've really been through, you know, I, there was a, you know, the, the author was struggling with an addiction. The author had been through a divorce. The author was pining over the m- losing his wife and, and, and all through that, he's teetering closer and closer to losing his mind. You know, well, I don't, wouldn't say that was me to a T, but you know, that has reflections of where I've been in the past. Uh, and keeping them separate, I mean, I, I didn't keep them separate. I, I, I went fully emerged into the story. I brought the book is the story is called Deacon. So you have Deacon emerging from the pages out of his post apocalyptic world while you have Damon submerging himself into his own demons and sinking into the darkness. Uh, and you know, what what culminates is really I, I've had readers who were like disheveled when they they finish reading that story and just like what did I just read and uh you know I for two weeks after I finished that book like I had a hard time sleeping myself it was it was so immersive it was really a I don't think there'll be a part two but it was very immersive. You can imagine it can be very cathartic at times as well to yeah it can maybe not be. to that level but <laughs> writing us the types of stories that you write yeah definitely um the cathartic ones are usually a little more lighthearted than that uh there have been cathartic ones though yeah I also um i think splattery is going to be my new go-to word for describing certain <laughs> kinds of horror it's my yeah favorite. yeah definitely now there's a there's a genre called splatter punk which I, I've never considered myself a part of them. A- and the the traditional fans of that genre would not consider Damon Manx a splatterpunk author. But uh, there are times where I think I dip my toes in the, in the water and become a bit splattery. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I can imagine it, it would be easy to do in this genre. Yeah, definitely easy to just go for it. Because in horror, you know, hor- horrific things happen, and s- sometimes you need to describe them. Yes, absolutely. 
what is it about short stories do you think that draws you to writing with in this particular genre? I really like the ability to world build, create a character, an in-depth character, tell a story, create a twist, and surprise the reader in a very minimal amount of pages. To me, that's a challenge. I I really, I found it difficult to do that initially, and my short stories ended up being like 50 pages long, 80 pages long, uh, certainly not short stories by today's standards. And uh, it's, it's so, I had read, a book by Joe Hill called 20th Century Ghosts. And he, Joe Hill is Stephen King's son. And his collection of short stories impressed me on such a level that after reading it, I said, I have to come out with my own collection of short stories. And from there, I started writing lots of these short stories. Uh, some, the dead girl, the recalculating, some of, some of those very early short stories were written right in inside the prison cell while I was there. Devlin Devlin's Mance is the first complete short story I ever wrote. And uh like I just love the ability to create a world and condense it, condense a novel into five thousand words. And it's it's very gratifying. Um novels are too. But the short story to be able to do that in such a limited time, it, it's something. Yeah, I can imagine. And, uh, you mentioned recalculating, which is you do an incredible job of creating this very intense, very, it, it's pretty terrifying experience. Although on the one hand, you're kind of rooting for the car. But, um, <laughs> yeah. It's just what you can encapsulate in such a small space. Yes. Well, the man in recalculating is a scoundrel and, and we're not supposed to like him because he does all the terrible things that scoundrels do. You know, he's cheating on his wife. He's embezzling from his job. He is very absorbed with himself. Uh, he's a narcissist. He's, hmm, he sounds, sounds a lot like somebody, uh, but he is just a bad, bad guy that you're not supposed to like you know but is he always a bad guy maybe there's a chance for him and then his car uh and his brand new navigational system takes his ho- takes him hostage and has a lot of fun with him in the process and that's that's also based on it on a something that i had heard and came up with a story so I I met this guy who had gotten thrown into the county jail and he had stolen a car and it was in Manhattan and he was trying to get out of Manhattan, but he didn't know how to program the navigational system and he didn't know his way out of Manhattan and he kept going around in circles and the car just kept saying recalculating, recalculating until he finally found himself in in front of a police precinct and and they of course saw him out there uh monkeying in the car and arrested him on the spot and that's the inspiration <laughs> terrible irony isn't it um i also don't know why re- the word recalculating no matter how blandly it's said by the voice of the navigation always sounds snarky <laughs> It is. I think it's the accents that they use or just they, they've they got a chip on their shoulder when they say it. There's yeah, no doubt. I agree. It's time for our second break of this episode, but I've always thought that, that they just somehow sound snarky. And I think it's me because I have guilt. Why I have guilt that the GPS has to recalculate because I took the wrong turn? I don't know. But I think I feel guilty and then the voice sounds snarky. Um, or maybe it really does sound snarky and it's not just me. I am not sure. We can ponder that over the break. (laughs) When we come back from that break, Damon will be talking about some of his other writings. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. 
Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my conversation with author Damon Manx. Let's return to that interview. Um, are there any of your other books, writings, short stories that you would like to highlight? Yeah. So uh, most recently, I got a book out. Uh, came out last January. It's called Our Cranium that I wrote with an author. Uh, his name's Mark Taus. He hails from Australia. He's a Yorkshireman living in Australia. Brilliant writer. Uh, together we created this, uh, this story called Our Cranium, which I'm so very proud of. It takes four horror authors in the near future. Uh, there is a lot of co- heavy competition and, uh, they would love to see who is the scariest, but have never been able to settle that debate. Finally, there is now a program called Our Cranium that allows them to virtually go inside the program. And while one of the authors fuses with the program to create the best story they could possibly come with the aid of artificial intelligence, the other three authors become the characters in the book inside the program. And they put put each other through a nightmare, um, and it gets it gets pretty bumpy, for sure. Uh, because as you can imagine, they each want to one up the other, and it it ends pretty and with a traumatic twist, for sure, as as most of my stories do. But our cranium actually just came out in a full theatrical audio book, which. Uh, we had Lee Kenny as our narrator and Sarah Ruth Thomas of, uh, the No Sleep podcast do the characters of this. And it's got full backup soundtrack to it, uh, sound effects, eerie, creepy music. It's very immersive and definitely a, a hell, a hell of an experience for the audiobook lovers. Yeah, that's really exciting. I love audiobooks that have full casts and, and extra, you know, I mean, I love audiobooks in general, but the ones that are really well done with a full cast are great. Yeah, there's another book that I would like to mention, which was actually the yeah. first book that I, I came out with. And it's a short, it's not even a novella, it's a novelette, and it's called Abigail, uh, which is a 50 page book. Um, probably my most popular of the books I've released and Abigail takes a a Florida man who has been marginalized his whole life he's he's a gay man growing up in the south he's been picked on he's been bullied now that he's an adult he's pretty sure he's never going to find happiness and on the night of the best possibly the best state of his life he comes home to find a baby on his front steps and that baby turns out to have horns and violet eyes and a forked tongue. And when Abigail looks at him, he is overcome with a sense of adoration and unconditional love. And he knows that he will must do everything in his power to take care of this child. Um, 
there's a heck of a message in there and it's uh it's got a twilight zone feel to it and a twilight zone twist there's no splattery or or even the mention of any any blood and i'd venture to say it's probably not really a horror book it's a little more mystical um but it's a it's a feel good story and and there's probably more to come in the abigail universe if i were being honest about it okay thank you for that mm. um, how about what you're working on now anything you can share Yes, definitely. And so for the last four years, I have been working on a four book series. Um, it's actually one complete story, but it's so long. I need to break it into four pieces to release to the public because, you know, the today's market does not like 500,000 word books. Um, unless you're George R. R. Martin. It's called The Ozonox. Uh, book one will be out sometime in the summer. It's called Scream in the Dark. It takes place in 1979 in a small mountain town in New York State. There is a large cast of characters. Uh, Sheriff Carl Primrose is a Vietnam veteran who uh, is just happy with his post in his small quiet town and wants nothing more than to do right by the people he cares about. Troy Fisher loves Halloween. It's his favorite time of year. And now the holiday is just a week away. He's built a little haunted house in his garage. It's called Scream in the Dark. And it's extra special because the new girl at school, who Troy is very fond of, has agreed to come be one of the guests at his Halloween party. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, an excavation team has uncovered what appears to be an Indian burial tomb, and something has been released. It takes place the week before Halloween. It is a very in-depth story that touches on a lot of lot of subjects, um, but essentially it's a creature feature meets coming of age. If anything, I would say... Uh, Think of Salem's Lot meets Stranger Things. Okay. But I just mm. want to say, people, stop messing with tombs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well. You know. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it happens, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and if you wouldn't have a book if it didn't happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. And fortunately, you know, where I grew up, there's a quarry. Uh where they're constantly unearthing things because the, the Lenny Lenape tribe was uh, very prolific in the area where I grew up and, you know, they're, they're always finding things. So a lot of this book is, is rooted in things I experienced throughout my life. Okay. There's a short story in uh, Manxiety called The Last Waltz, and you have a, a company, Last Waltz Publishing. Do you want to talk about that publishing company at all? Yeah. So I opened up Last Waltz Publishing after having a bad experience with my first publishing contract. I came out with Abigail under, uh, uh, I was signed to a company, and they were kind of on the way out. So they weren't paying their royalties. They weren't doing right by their authors. And I, I caught wind of that pretty quickly and pulled my book from it and decided, you know, I could either go that route again and try to find another indie publishing company to take on my work. You know, I, I could shoot for the bigger ones, but the, these days it, it's very difficult to get, get in the door and especially with what I was trying to do or I could try to open my own company. So I did that. I opened up Last Walt Publishing and I took it upon myself to learn everything I possibly could about publishing my own books with the intention of maybe taking one or two other authors on and helping them, you know, maybe so that they might not experience what I did, finding a, somebody who was less than representable of their work. So I did that. I, I learned how to format. I met, I met editors. I met book, um, 
cover designers. I I learned a little bit about marketing. I learned a little bit about advertising. I learned that there's a lot to learn when you own a publishing company. <laughs> and it's still like a learning process. It's, I, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, wow, did I make the right decision? But I, I'm the kind of person who has always blazed his own trail. Uh, I saw a movie uh, documentary about David Bowie. And he said, uh, he goes, I, I don't want to write the music that you want to hear. He said, I want to write the music I want to hear. And then I want you to end up liking it. And that's kind of like, that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, I want to write what I want to write. And then I want you to like it because it's good, you know, or not. <laughs> but hopefully that's what, what happens. So I'm a blaze your own trail kind of guy and hope that, others would gravitate to me in the process. And that's been my experience. It's been a good experience. I have several authors who are signed with Last Waltz Publishing, and I love every one of them. They are all brilliant, and we are, we are having a good time. That's awesome. They, you know, they, they always say if, you, if the book that you want to read doesn't exist, you should write it. But I love that you've created an even bigger space so that people who might not be able to find a home elsewhere can find one with you. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I would say, you know, these, these stories in the books that I publish are not the, the, what the mainstream of the horror genre is publishing these days. Well, most of the horror genre is going for that, um, that gut reaction book, that, that splattery, that, that very visceral book. And Last Waltz Publishing is really not about that at the moment. Um, not to say things don't ever change, but the authors that I have taken on really, I, I do it because they're great writers because they tell amazing stories and they they could have easily been published with the classics. Those, those are the kind of stories that speak out to me. And those are the kind of authors that speak out to me. Mm -hmm. And you have talked about various aspects of your life. You maybe came to writing a little differently than some authors from your experience both as a writer and now as a as a person who owns a publishing company, what advice would you have for aspiring authors? Mm. You know the 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 main the main thing is if you want to write, you need to write, and you need to write. Exercise that muscle as frequently as possible. If you can sit down and write something every day, that's certainly the way to do that. You don't you don't gain muscle by letting it sit and it's easy to go stale as a writer. So it's important to keep reading and it's important to keep writing. And, you know, when you're not feeling inspired to write, that's the time you should be reading and reading something that you usually maybe don't read, read something out of your, your wheelhouse. That's really important. And definitely buy the book on writing by Stephen King, because that is the Bible when it comes to the, the what and to do and what not to do as a writer. Time for that final break of this episode. When we come back, we'll find out what Damon likes to read in his spare time. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again.
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Damon Manx. You mentioned mm. reading. So when you take time to read just for you, what are your favorite genres and some of your favorite authors? You know, I I really do like the classics. Um, Hemingway has always been one of my favorite authors. Orwell has been one of my favorite authors. I do love Stephen King. Um, although lately I, you know, I, I devoured Stephen King in, in the early days. Um, now I'm reading a lot of the, the indie authors out there. Uh, the people who are just trying to make names for themselves in the market. And you've got a lot of brilliant authors out there and and I have a lot of friends and they're all they're all writing prolifically writing so I have no shortage on reading we just published a book called Jack of All Trades by Jack Wells and Jack is probably one of the certainly top top of the list when it comes to writers in this market um it's so fresh and, and he has this way of capturing um from Victorian style prose to very contemporary fiction. Uh, so I, I'm rereading Jack book again. It, he, uh, we, we published it uh, about a month ago. And of course I read it beforehand, but it's, it's so brilliant. It's called Jack of all trades by Jack Wells. He, so he, he takes you back into, um, white chapel, England, London in, uh, the 1800s, uh, to visit that. And he really, you feel like you're within that, that story, like very, very easily could be reading it a hundred years ago. Uh, he's just that good of a writer. Wow. That's, that's very cool. Uh, how about, um, internet presence? So I know you have an author web sh- website. I'm sure Last Waltz Publishing has a website. Can you share places where people can find you to learn more about you and your books? So whether that's websites or social media, et cetera. Yeah. So of course, you know, I'm on all the socials. Um, I'm on, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. Twitter. I, I have a Twitter. I don't. I see that thing is becoming not really very useful. Um, I, I have all of those. I do have two websites. I'm at damonmanks.com. Um, and also we have the, the last waltz publishing website, which is www.lastwaltzpublishing.com where you can find all the books written by myself and the authors of Last Waltz Publishing. You can purchase those books there directly from us by signed copies that will be sent to your house. And we're also working on a digital platform where eBooks will be uh, available directly through us. You won't have to go to Amazon to buy downloadable books for your Kindle. You can do it directly through Last Waltz Publishing. Uh, of course, you can find and leave reviews for me on the Goodreads page. The Amazon page, you can find all of my books on Amazon. And at the moment, uh, we have Manxiety available at Barnes & Noble. And we're about to have about four or five more Last Waltz titles going into Barnes & Noble as well. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Well, Damon, we've talked about a few different things, but is there anything that we haven't covered that you wanted to make sure you highlighted during this time? You know, so I spoke about it briefly and in the beginning, and it has been my inspiration. But yes, yeah, so 11, I just celebrated 11 years clean and sober. And that is the root of my passion. That is the reason I'm still here the reason I was able to pursue my dream. Um, If anyone in your listening audience is going through a similar struggle, there's no way you're going to get through it on your own with keeping your mouth shut. You do need to talk to somebody and ask for help. And there's lots of organizations that can do that. Whether you reach out to any of the 12 step programs to do that, you talk to a member of a clergy, you talk to a family member, I'm easy to find. 
find me, send me a message on social media. I'll talk to you. Uh, we have a saying that's a closed mouth does not get fed. So don't keep your mouth closed. If you're struggling with addiction or know someone who has, reach out to somebody who's been through it and somebody who can help. That is so important. Yes. Thank you for that. And I appreciate it. Um, and I don't mean this to sound flippant, but I, I do love that you got sober on Halloween. That just seems fitting for your brand. Yeah, it did work out pretty, pretty fitting. Um, yeah, it just kind of happened that way. Um, and it's, it's served to be a, a, a quite the occasion every year when it rolls around. So sure. I'm, well, you I'm grateful. Built in celebration. I absolutely do. So 11 years was, it's, they're all big for me, but you know, this year was, was truly big because of, you know, I, I, I have been dealing with, with the social anxiety when I, why I came out and, and wanted to emerge into the author world because it's, it's a big, scary world, all this social media and all these conventions going on. And the idea of throwing myself out there, exposing myself to the the public in such a vulnerable way was terrifying. And this last year I started doing it in small steps. I, I attended a a small one day book uh, selling show. I I upped that up to maybe doing one or two a month uh, and really stepping out of my comfort zone, knowing that, you know, if, if, I was feeling like it was becoming too overwhelming that it's okay to give myself a break and, and step away from the table or go outside or, or, you know, recoup for a little bit. Um, and this experiment of stepping out of the comfort zone has been a really liberating one. And I'm now I'm, I'm falling into the groove and, and I'm doing more and more conventions. I was last weekend I was invited to be a guest at Chiller Theater and uh, this is the first show that I was actually invited to be a guest at and I had a couple hundred celebrities there and and I was just going up to every celebrity introducing myself like I had every right to be there handing him a book and be and snapping pictures with him like uh like it was nobody's business and it, it was liberating. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is awesome. And I think it's a really good point that writing can be very solitary. And I think a lot of writers are introverts and maybe do have a lot of anxiety. So the writing part isn't the problem. It's the getting out there, the, you know, the marketing and the publishing and not the publishing, but the, the promoting that, we, that definitely is anxiety causing for me just talking about it. So. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, sure you can put out the book and then what, you know, if, if you're lucky enough to have a marketing team on your side or, or you get maybe published by a larger publishing company that, that will promote you. That's great. That's not the case though for 90 something percent of the authors out there where the promotion does come in for me, where I found the readers is doing these events and connecting with the events. And when people meet you and, and see your book, you know, you're a storyteller. They want to hear a story. So you need to talk about it and you need to try to, you know, for me being, being uh, a little social awkward at the beginning, you know, that was, uh, exhausting to to really overcome, but uh, it, it got it gets easier with each with each show. It becomes easier, um, but it's so important because that's the the one on one connection with the readers is really really what what it's all about. Yep, absolutely. Well, Damon, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me, not only about the book, but about your experiences and just sharing everything that you've shared. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I had a very good time. Thank you once again to Damon for joining me to talk about this collection of short stories and some of his other writings. Really appreciate it. As I said at the beginning, um, 
first, if you're a fan of horror and that genre, if you, it's uh, not the splattery kind, again, that's going to be my new favorite word. Um, if you're a fan of short stories, you definitely want to check this out. As I said earlier, if you are not necessarily the biggest fan of horror or the biggest fan of short stories, either both or severally, still, you might want to check this out. Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting to appreciate short stories a lot more than when I first started. And, I don't feel as compelled to need as much of an epilogue after every short story as I as I did in the early days. I still want to know more when I fall in love with characters. I just want their story to go on. But um, And maybe short stories in the horror variety are better for me because it's not my favorite, and therefore I do not need longer stories. Encapsulated horror stories might be key for me. That, that's something that I, could, I should consider. Um, but regardless... I enjoyed the book. It is thought provoking. It's a little dark, not too gory, really not splattery at all. Uh, did not keep me up at night. So you're going to know your own level on that kind of stuff about what keeps you up at night. It's definitely more disturbing and it is more disturbing in the fact that these are things, some of these things are just the battles that we fight every day, right? Anxiety, depression, addiction, all of those, all of those things that people battle every day, and yet they can be their own type of horror. Uh, so if that disturbs you, then you may or may, you may want to stay away from this book, or you may want to dive right in, depending on, on your trigger, trigger level. Um, but yeah, check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, in the meantime, I hope that you are having, again, a great start to your November. I hope that your week itself is going well whatever your weather and i apologize if i brag about mine uh, because it's beautiful and sunny in 60s here so uh, whatever <laughs> but whatever your weather i hope you're having a great week thank you as always for joining me for these interviews i love bringing them to you and i love that you join me to listen to them if you have not done so already and you are compelled to there's a few things you can do to help this get this podcast out to more listeners it really helps the show i appreciate it very much uh like, follow, subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. You can also leave a review on that platform. Written, starred, one sentence, more extensive, whatever you're in the mood for at the time. It all helps. And of course, you can follow the podcast on social media, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Come find me. Tell me what you're reading. Tell me how your weather is. Hope you're having a great week. Hope whatever's going on this week, whatever your weather is, you have plenty of time to get yourself lost in lots of good books. Talk to you next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.